So now we're in front of the IBM Stretch Model 7030, which is this a, is this a supercomputer technically? This was the fastest computer in the world in 1961. They only built nine of them. 1961. So that's, uh, you were working on this, right? Yeah, that's right, as, a, as, a, as some kind of fetal thing. <laughs> and there was the Cray, what, what about the Cray supercomputer? Is that before this or after it? That was from the 1976, okay, the so first the, Cray. The Cray 1? Yeah. So the Cray 1 was after this. And what's, is there anything special about this that we need to know? This it's was massive. One, it's massive. It was one of the, it was pretty much the first big computer that had transistors. And before that, everything was vacuum tubes. Right. It had uh, one meg of memory. It costs eight million dollars. Is that so? That one megabyte of RAM. One megabyte of RAM. Do you know what RAM type it was? It what? was core memory. Core memory. Yeah. What did core memory look like? It was basically. Is that like all the wires? Donuts. And, yeah, okay. Uh, it was iron donuts with wires through. <laughs> and then the uh, the Cray that came after it. Did Cray sort of? put this out of commission, I guess, at the time? Did they replace this, or? No, there was a whole bunch of faster supercomputers in between. Okay. Uh, Cray worked for CDC after, right. uh, you know, and IBM sort of lost the supercomputing business at some point. Cool. Sort of like they lost everything now. Yeah, <laughs> except for Watson. Except for Watson. That's apparently the future. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like the panel. If you, uh, like, if this was your PC, you, you could see what in, is inside every one of your registers because it displayed it all. Is that what that is? Yeah, That's these are these are the registers where the program counter is, so you could actually see the machine running and where everything. I guess if it halted, you could tell exactly what was inside it at so the time. So, for uh, for folks who don't necessarily understand any type of programming, when we're looking at registers, I mean, what is it actually telling us? Like when you look at this stuff, the values that are in them. Yeah. And then what's over here? Is that more of the same? Yeah, I think I took some pictures of this. We got the register one, register two, <laughs> program count register, word count register. Tape drives down here. Tape drive buttons, anyway. These are control. That's just some big control panel. Big control panel. <laughs> one mega memory for $8 million. I don't know if that $8 million is the, uh, the is $1961 dollars or our dollars. Or modern dollars. <laughs> or modern, if, it, if it's modern dollars, if, if it's $1961 dollars, it's like $50 million for this thing. How much was it for eight megabytes? Or one, one, megabyte. one megabyte. Eight million dollars. Eight million dollars for one megabyte. Yeah. A machine with one megabyte of RAM. Does this have a speed anywhere? What was, how fast is this stuff? 714,000 ads per second. What it so adds as in like literally. Add two numbers together, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Why did they measure it that way? Less, le less than a megahertz. <laughs> what? If you have megahertz, you'd have about one million ads per second, right? Okay. So this thing was pretty slow. Why, why is it measured in ads per second? Why like, specifically? That just, that's just what they decided? That's just what they decided. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about the so let's talk about the Cray One for a minute. So Cray One made by Cray Research, of course. What do you know about that one? I actually worked on a Cray One S. It was a basically a Fortran machine, <laughs> and uh, it's sort of like a modern processor in a way because you know on modern Intel you have AVX. They had vectors just like that on this machine, so you could add 64. And so you can think of AVX. When you worked on it, what did, what did you do on it? I did the electromagnetic field calculations. For uh, actually designing what the, was the Cray did? XMP, right, the more modern yeah. ones. So we were modeling the twisted pair that, that hooks together the circuit boards. Now you would have traces on a circuit board hooking the memory to the CPU. Uh -huh. But back then they did it with twisted pairs and physical wires. Physical wires. This the uh, Cray one was I think was running at 70 megahertz, which was the fastest machine in the world at the time. It's a 70 this megahertz. Is, I machine. guess this is all single core, right? This is back before. The one that came after this, Cray XMP, had four cores. Oh, really? Okay. So they actually built a four and an eight core version based on this one. Right. Into the 80s. I saw one thing. So this is a C shape, the Cray one. The reason it's a C shape is they had a timing problem, right? So you wanted to keep the maximum distance, I believe, between the circuit boards wiring. It was eight inches. So in order to keep the timing, <laughs> they made it into a C shape. The power supply is all through the bottom of it. So it, 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 it powered like a locomotive, right? It was, <laughs> it was, and it was not cheap. I think that, that thing was like $10 million. Well, and it's all leather. It's all leather? Yeah, it's all leather. What is? The, the case. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's encased in leather, and you, oh, can, yeah, you get yeah. the leather in any color you want. Right. Well, one of the other things, there's like a liquid cooled. That's a Cray 2. So that's that's a, what's the, over there, yeah. So the Cray 2 is liquid cooled. That was liquid cooled with fluorine. Okay. And each Cray 2 came with a custom waterfall. 
for the millions of dollars, you got a custom waterfall. Was the waterfall functional or was it just for looks? It was just for looks. Okay. So it made it look cool. Right. But the liquid, I guess, fell. What, what kind of liquid was it? Uh, fluorine. Fluorine. Some, so kind of, some kind of fluorine. Falls down and just pumps through, what, did it cool a CPU or something? Or? Yeah, it cooled the whole thing. The entire machine was immersed in it. Okay. And it would pump it through then take it out, run it through the waterfall and chill it. And <laughs> it would come back in. <laughs> so they were pretty neat to look at. So that's one of the earlier supercomputers, I guess. Yeah, with liquid cooling. Yeah, and then just days ago, we saw NVIDIA's $200,000. It wasn't even a supercomputer. It was just a high-end box for whatever that was. 126,000. Yeah. Yeah, and it was 170 teraflops. Yeah. And it I blows think... blows these away, and they're think, millions of dollars. What do you get out of a Cray? I don't know. I guess, to be fair, a modern $500 computer is probably better than these, right? Yeah. <laughs> Blow it away. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the first things we're looking at here is the Ramac, which is the first disk drive. disk drive, and it's got these massive platters. I don't how many platters were in there. Is it Fifty like, platters. Fifty platters, and that stores how much data? Five megabytes. Five megabytes. So f something like five million characters, five megabytes of data, and you've got 128 megabytes. So this is a micro SD card that we shoot with. You can't even see it on the camera, I'm sure. Uh, 128 gigabytes, right? About 20,000 times more on this. Then, and this is a lot more faster. <laughs> <laughs> what, so the RAM X spins at a 1200 RPM? 1200 already? RPM. So 1200 RPM, it stores five megabytes of data, and it was on lease, right? Was it, it was on lease, lease $30,000 a month converted right. if you got a small computer with it from IBM. And when was, when was it made? 1956. Okay, so, so 1956, that is the first disk drive. <laughs> And we've got plenty of B-roll of it, but there's some other cool stuff too. Like we were talking earlier about some of the early storage on tapes, obviously. Tapes predated this, is that right? Tapes predated yeah. this, and then drums also predated this. Right. We have some B-roll of drums. Yes, yeah. So that's the Ramac. <laughs> and I guess in our day, we're going to see the end of the discs in the next few years, so. Yeah. This is the beginning, and we're going to see the end. 